The Jurassic, a period that would produce predators unlike anything that had come before. In prehistoric China, one of these highly evolved killers is stalking her prey. Yang Chuanosaurus, nine meters long, lined with compact muscle and armed with large blade-like teeth. She is the top predator in this region. She is fully capable of taking down large and powerful prey, but that does not mean it is always easy especially given her current targets. Two Zhangosaurus are six meter long stegosaurs, and what they lack in speed and brains, they make up for with dangerous phagomizers on their tails. There are many different types of stegosaurs in China at this time, and so some predators such as Yangchuanosaurus have become specialized in hunting such deadly prey. It doesn't always go her way, however. Her body is covered in scars, two-thirds of them inflicted by stegosaurs, but with each one she has gotten wiser and knows how to hunt them better than ever. She just has to choose the right target and strike at the right time. She zeroes in on one of the older, slower members of the herd that is drifting away from the others, and once she feels the moment is right, she attacks. Parting the foliage before her, the two and a half ton predator moved with surprising speed and singular intent. As she bolted towards her target, one of the other Tujangosaurus raised the alarm, and some of the herd took defensive stances. The old Tujangosaurus was slower than most of the others, but saw the incoming predator charging straight for him. Instinctively, he twisted his body and swung his tail in a wide arc in an attempt to slash the incoming attacker. Yang Chuanosaurus saw this coming and drove her feet into the ground, coming to a near dead stop. At the same time, she lifted her head upwards allowing the herbivore's tail to pass right by her neck, dangerously close, but now her prey was wide open. Opening her jaws and plunging her head forward, she bit into the exposed left side of the herbivore, biting into its wide gut. The stegosaur staggered, but as the carnivore shook her head to cut even deeper, her victim swung its tail back around to impale her on the side. The Angchornosaurus dropped to the ground, letting the returning swing pass over her, as the Tujangosaurus's tail returned to its rear, the attacking predator lunged at her prey's front left leg, her sharp teeth cutting into the flesh below the knee. Crying out in pain, the Tujangosaurus tried another wide swing, attempting to stab into the predator's side. The Angchuanosaurus sees it coming and releases her grip, backing out of the tail's range, but the slight bit of relief the Stegosaur feels fades away as the carnivore moves forward again, this time attacking his back left leg. She doesn't bite to rip and tear flesh this time. She holds on and pulls the back leg underneath the Tujangosaurus' body. With only his torn front leg to support his left side, the Stegosaur falls to the ground. Flailing his tail in a vain attempt to still wound his attacker, the Tujangosaurus struggled to right himself. The Yang Tujangosaurus circled to the front of her prey and moved forward again. The Tujangosaurus kicks her in the front of her snout with his good front leg. This only works to anger his attacker, however. Blitzing forward with more aggression, the Yangchuanosaurus sinks her teeth into the herbivore's neck and pins his shoulder with one leg. She then holds the struggling prey as her teeth cut into his neck and blood flows down her jaws. The Stegosaur fought back, but the fight was all but over, and his resistance grew weaker and weaker until he succumbed to his wounds. Sensing her prey was dead, the female Yang Chuanosaurus peered up at the other Chushangosaurus that had been howling at her the entire time. They had grouped together and swung their tails back and forth, but none of them had moved to assist the old male. Despite the fact that they were a herd, they rarely ever defended each other unless they were very close by, saving one of their own, not worth the risk to their own lives. But the Yang Chuanosaurus didn't want to risk being so close to so many heavily armed herbivores, and so she grabbed the corpse by the base of the tail and pulled it away so she could feed in peace. Yang Chuanosaurus are intelligent hunters, using not only their size and power to take down prey, but also strategy that can take years to master. Every scar on her body is a lesson that has honed her into an efficient predator. She knew exactly which was the weakest member of the herd, where his weak points were, and how best to avoid his tail spikes. A near flawless kill, marking her out as a seasoned veteran of her species. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down a highly requested theropod, 
Yangchuanosaurus. Yangchuanosaurus's first remains were discovered in 1977 by a construction worker in what is now the Xingmiao Formation of China. This first skeleton was nearly complete and named Yangchuanosaurus shangyuensis after the region it was found. A second species, Yangchuanosaurus magnus, was discovered and named in 1983 after a second near-complete skeleton was found in the same formation. However, a later study found that there weren't enough differences between the two skeletons for them to be different species, and so Magnus is no longer valid. Yangchuanosaurus would receive an official second species named Zygonensis, based on partial remains that were originally assigned to a different species, but phylogenetic analysis showed that it was closely related to Yangchuanosaurus, and so was assigned to this genus. It lived in the middle to late Jurassic, between 168 and 140 million years ago. The first specimen had a skull length of 82 centimeters and was 8 meters long when it died. The second specimen was much larger, with a skull length of 1.1 meters and growing up to 10.8 meters long. Gregory S. Paul calculated Yang Chuanosaurus's average size to be 11 meters long, stand 3 meters tall at the shoulder, and weigh 3 tons. This not only made it the largest predator in its region, but also one of the largest terrestrial carnivores of the Jurassic period. Its size and build is very similar to Allosaurus, and since they lived in similar times, they likely filled similar roles in their ecosystem, just in opposite parts of the world. Despite being quite similar, Yangchuanosaurus belonged to the Metriorinchidae family, and had a typical theropod build. A long tail that made up half its length, powerful hind legs that would have made it a fast runner, small forearms with three fingers and claws, which may have been quite strong and used in attacking or securing prey, and a short neck that held its large head, that housed its large blade-like teeth. The skull also had a unique assortment of hornlets, ridges and crests, that while likely used for display, may also have been useful for protecting the animal's face from damage, not just from violent encounters with prey, but also from other members of its own species. Based on the size of its brain to body size, Yangchuanosaurus is believed to be quite intelligent and is theorized to have been able to plan out attacks or even have complex social behavior. Perhaps it needed to be smart as it shared its environment with many stegosaurs and sauropods and needed to either be crafty enough to hunt them or have an organized enough pack to be able to take down such dangerous prey. Some species that lived alongside include two Giangosaurus, Chunkingosaurus, two Stegosaurs, Omiosaurus, Shunosaurus, all sauropods, and Gasosaurus, another predator, and Zhuanghanosaurus, a small predator. Yangchuanosaurus is one of those predators that are brought up when the idea of sauropod killers is put forth. While it's unlikely a single Yangchuanosaurus could bring down something like a Mementisaurus on its own, especially without getting flattened. The concept of a pack of these large predators swarming and widowing down a large prey item, using similar tactics to grey wolves or painted wolves, does seem like something they could have evolved to do. Biting into a victim and then retreating, playing the long game instead of overpowering the prey and going for a bite to the neck. A death by a thousand cuts, so to speak. Of course, we will probably never know, and these are all just theories. But we can say with some certainty that like modern predators, they went for the young, old, sick, or injured whenever possible. So, Yang Chuanosaurus, a fast, powerful, and intelligent hunter that ruled Jurassic China. But what do you think of Yang Chuanosaurus? And for my question of the week, do you think apex predators like Yang Chuanosaurus went after dangerous prey like stegosaurs regularly? Or only when they absolutely had to? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.